Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, how are you all doing? My name is Amanda Ellis and a very warm welcome to my channel here, whether you're new or whether you are returning. Uh, I was going to do a video for the forthcoming full moon in Aquarius. But what I'm sensing is so much change happening for so many people right now, summed up, unfortunately, very eloquently, but also very poignantly by somebody who left a message on my Facebook page today. I'm going to read out her comment in a moment, ask you to send her love, but equally, even though you might not be in the very same place as her, and your world might be changing beyond recognition, for different reasons. I've titled this video, I Know That You're In Pain, because I guess the human condition is such that there is always a degree of pain or suffering operating beneath the surface in many, in most. But we have particular periods and portals and dates and alignments that can create a, a, a breakthrough, a breakdown, a crumbling away of the old to make way for the new. It can be very difficult, but as a community, I know that you are very strong. I'm proud to know some of you, even though I haven't met you in person. I feel as though I know you because I read your comments. I get to know you energetically. I know that I've got people that follow me who are recovering addicts. I know I have a beautiful man that follows me, I won't name you, but who used to be homeless and used to listen to me, I'm sure you don't mind me saying, on a little uh, phone, I think. And he says that I helped get him through. Hopefully I help get many of you through episodes and difficulties and you get me through them as well. You know, there are days and weeks and times where I also need support and you give me that. That's what community is, is it not? But right now, definitely, particularly with this full moon in Aquarius, which seems to be bringing up so much for so many in different ways, I think we need a video dedicated to how we can help ourselves through difficult times. And we're going to ask for some guidance from my guides, Archangel Metatron and Jesus in particular, but I also want to bring in some shamanic energy. I've chosen four decks and four sprays to work with, and it's quite interesting. And I'm going to do something a bit different, which is that I haven't got time to do pick a card today, but the way that I have arranged the cards I'm noticing is I've put a spray on top of each of them. So we will look at which one you're attracted to and it may very well be there's a particular message for you later on. But first, let's just address this collective energy. I'm not going to go into the astrology of the full moon in Aquarius. There are many people that can do that for you. Um, and I am noticing an upsurge in people that are particularly putting a lot of fear out there at the more moment, which I really don't think serves any purpose other than to lower the vibration, actually, particularly when you don't back it up with a solution. So we're not going to do that here. Whatever arises, arises and we will cope with it in the same way that we cope with things that arise in our private lives and our personal lives and we transition and we change. So the world may very well have a moment like that coming up soon. It may not, but definitely, as you know, if you followed me a while, we know that we are in the shift of ages. We're in an awakening process, an ascension process, and it's bumpy, okay? Uh, it's meant to be bumpy. You can't bring about any type of change from a place of stagnancy and no movement, okay? Right, let me read you then uh, this lady's comment, and I think it's fair to, 
fair to actually put it out there because she's put it publicly on a social media platform. I'll just say her first name and again, like you just to send her love. So her name is Kristen and she says, Dear Amanda, I have just crumbled. Now, before we even go any further on, I would like to acknowledge that actually it takes bravery to even admit that we are struggling a lot of the time. I think a lot of the problems that we have in life is the burying down of emotions and the pretending that everything is okay when it's really not. So, Always give yourself a pat on the back when you are able to put your hand up and say, you know, I need help, I'm sinking, or as she says here, I'm crumbling. So, dear Amanda, I have just crumbled. Please help me to understand. I had just become online from leaving the matrix more. I've qualified as a sound ambassador. My psychic ability has grown stronger. I always send love to the world, to Mother Earth, and have started learning shamanic drumming. Keep doing that. Always grateful for what I have in my life. In one week, I have lost my home, my income, and I cannot afford the high rents. Nowhere will take my small dog, and I will be homeless in two weeks. The universe has plans, but what I cannot get past this devastation. At 56, I'm petrified. Um, I've lost my daily practice, my connection to source, my higher self, self, and every corner I turn is a block. I have a few supporters, but what the heck is this? I take strength from your uploads, but today I've crumbled. Tomorrow is another day, sending you all love. I love the fact that you sign off, tomorrow is another day, and that however anybody's circumstances is in any one particular moment or however we feel in any one particular moment there is always another day to write things to bring things back into balance including our own mental state maybe that's not a comment on this particular lady um, but there is always another day now this comment came in on the back of a very short little video I put up this morning on Instagram and Facebook, which I'll briefly summarise, was about uh, enablers versus supporters. And the fact that we need to have people in our life who support us, who are safety net energy, as well as... Um, you know, many other beautiful things, you know, not just obviously having people there for when you need them. Uh, a true friend and true uh, acquaintance, true people in your life, family are there through thick and thin, the good times and the not so good times. Um, but it's interesting that, yeah, this comment came in on the back of that. The first thing that I'd like to say, and this isn't personal advice particularly to, to this lady, I'd like to widen it to everybody that resonates with the feeling that their world is crumbling for any type of situation going on right now. And a feeling as though they can't maybe sense spirit, feel spirit, feel let down by spirit. This is what, these are the messages that I'd like to bring forth now in this video. Sending that lady love. Um, and knowing that spirit will be with her as spirit is with you. The thing about support is the first thing I'd like to maybe just touch on. I mean, it's interesting, all of this is coming in on the back of a full moon in Aquarius. And Aquarius by nature is, you know, quite, quite mysterious. It's about the new. It, it's bringing in the new. Where are we? We are, we are at the start of the Aquarian age. None of us know what it's going to look like, what's really going to be expected of us. We might have an idea, but we don't really know. And uh, at such times, of course, it's very important when we shift that we have strong support systems. I noted in the news today and I think I'm correct. If I'm out by a couple of days, forgive me. But I've seen it for a reason, even if the even if the date is not correct, that the festival of Woodstock um, commenced around about now. And of course, Woodstock in the 60s was this gathering of souls of like mind who had a vision of what they wished the future to be, what they wished to seed and plant and grow. 
And I mean, I wasn't there, I wasn't alive then, but I can imagine that if you were there, you would look around now at the world and think, you know, has anything actually changed? Have we achieved anything? But yet I'm the product of parents that lived through that era. And even though they weren't necessarily present at Woodstock, would have been affected by the energy that that particular gathering and that portal created. And here I am now talking to you 50 odd years later. So always remember that seeds are planted and you don't necessarily see the growth for a while. Um, I'll come back to the Woodstock thing in a minute because I think it's relevant. But back to this thing about support. There is no judgment on those who don't have strong support systems. We're in a disconnected world. Ironically, we've never been more connected in terms of, for example, the internet, social media, etc. But in many ways, we've never been more disconnected from each other uh, in terms of actually showing up showing up physically maybe uh being there for each other you know i'm a mother to gen z and one thing i've observed and i think it's probably even more exaggerated in the generations after gen z is the reluctance and the hesitancy and the inability actually to connect in a way that my generation can but we're losing the skills as well, you know, in terms of just picking up the phone and having a conversation with somebody. Um, you know, the, dreading the phone going past nine o'clock because you don't actually want to speak to anybody, that type of energy. But the younger ones, you know, unless it's sent on a text or can be done over an app, human interaction, uh, which is part of support network, is, is difficult for them. Are they building support network in a different way? Yes, I guess so. The online world is, of course, valid. And the fact I'm speaking to you to hopefully sow some positivity and give you some support today is absolutely valid. But it can't be at the expense of physically showing up as well. Yeah. There's also something here about being alone and feeling lonely and the poem for this week, actually, from the We Moon Diary, which I sometimes read from, is very, very apt. The poem is called The New Beginning by Georgia G, written in 2022. If you've got the diary, it's on page 123. The, and the poem, oh, sorry, no, that's actually just the picture. The picture is of the butterfly. <laughs> but maybe I needed to just take, you know, acknowledge the artist as well. The poem is called Reassurances and it's written by Kim Adonna in 2022. It's very short and I just want to read it to you. It says, in an ancient voice, reminding you of life's humming stillness and of the stories behind a solitary monarch's migration, nature always calls your name. Loneliness is both real and a lie. Feeling compressed by your worries, it is easy to dismiss the forests bathed in shadow and light, the whisper of an insect's wings alongside you, the hug of rain-soaked earth around your feet. You are not alone. Everything you need surrounds you. So that's a beautiful poem. So let's pick up a few more of these points then from uh, Kirsten's post. Um, homelessness. Um, homelessness happening to more and more people. People not being able to afford the rents, not being able to find a home. It's happening in many different countries, isn't it? And there's no easy answer to this other than time and support networks. I keep going back to support networks. So in this type of situation, you know, the friend who can put you up for a couple of days, the, you know, the, the person at work who can help you over a difficult period, 
It's not going to be permanent, but it's just this nest that is given whilst we try to find our feet again. Of course, sometimes it can be weather events that also do this. Have a beautiful follower in America who I know pretty much lost her home due to hurricane or tornado this year. And I tell you what, I think you'll be watching this. I haven't reached out to you just because I've been so busy, but I really see you and I honour the fact that you held it together and that you are rebuilding from a, from a smaller pile, as it were. Um, and in that scenario, there were things saved from the home that were very precious and relevant and beautiful, pieces of art in particular. So we are never left with a, we're never left with absolutely nothing, even though it can feel like that. Yeah, it can feel like that. And of course, it doesn't have to be material possessions. It's to do with what we're left with, essentially, can be the bones, but it's these bones that rebuild. Think about the skeleton, the skeletal system within your body. Didn't I say something about that in my last video about we needed to, we're needing to look after our bones? I did, didn't I? Because it's this thing about it's, it's back to basics. It's back to the priorities. It's simplification. Um, let me just pull a card with regards to home and home sometimes being taken away from us. I'm being called to use a particular deck, so I'll just get it. Hold on. I think it's, I think it's this deck. No, it's not. It's the Wisdom of the Oracle deck, which is here. And the reason I'm being told to use this deck is that there's a card in this deck called No Place Like Home. So we're going to we're going to start with that and we're going to pull some cards around it. Because the thing is, when change comes into your life, even if it's not as drastic as the examples I'm giving you, it rocks, our, it rocks us. And our home, effectively, is also our body. It's this one here, no place like home. So when we are settled and happy and things are going well and we're not suffering, you know, it can, we feel safe, we're in a bubble that maybe, um, everything is right in our world. But what happens when that gets rocked? And it's interesting, the card actually, because that home that looks so stable is actually on a gigantic sort of almost like a gardening hook, you know, and it could easily be toppled in the wind or some other thing could, could, could create um, a falling away of what was once so stable. And indeed, not just that our body is our home, Mother Earth is our home. We know, and I'm not wanting to create fear here, but we know that there are Earth changes to come. And I've been saying this for many years, many years. Look back, I think there is an Earth Changes playlist actually on this channel. But we know it's coming. Um, there cannot be a shifting of the age without Mother Earth also being allowed to transform, transmute and do whatever she needs to do to get to the new vibration she needs to hold. Uh, and so if Mother Earth is also, you know, shaking, we are going to feel um, shaky and vulnerable. So let's pull a couple of cards that go with this and just see what guidance we get from spirit with regards to anybody that's feeling, I suppose really what I'm trying to convey is not feeling safe. Think about base chakra. The base chakra is the, it's the building block. It's our foundation. It's our security. It's linked into our home, our shelter. And for whatever reason right now, many people are having problems there within within that shaky foundations and the old earth 
you know, the, the foundations are crumbling. The new earth is not yet here, as I talked about in my last video. So we're, we're in this very weird limbo place at the moment. And it's OK to feel it's OK to feel um, vulnerable and shaky. I keep wanting to say the word shaky. So um, let's go on. There's another message that was just bubbling there. It's just gone out of my head about foundations, base chakra. Um, it'll come back. Oh, I know what it was. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get too, you know, political or talk about really sensitive social things in this video. I'll do that another time. Um, but, you know, this whole thing about shelter at home, let's just put it that way, shelter at home, lockdowns, you know, we have that arising again as a sort of spectre on the horizon linked into, um, you know, potential things that could happen. And and again, that that creates home to feel a bit like a prison. You know, we don't want to be forced back there. So this whole thing about home is just contentious at the moment for all sorts of reasons and difficult. So let's pull some cards. OK, let's do two cards cards. What else is there to say, please, Metatron? We've got the card of Yin, and I'm not surprised to see that because I was feeling the energy of Mary Magdalene earlier, and we've also got the card of Breathe here. There's something to do with... It's the... I feel like it's the mother wound. It's... You know, I'm not saying fathers aren't important because, of course, they are. But there's something about the mother that when a child that is really secure usually has a very loving bond with the mother. Um, and that is also linked into Mother Earth and how you feel about her. And it's needing us to it's needing us to be the empress, basically, at this time. Um what do empresses do? What do mothers do? They create home, do they not? They create a sense of home. I would hope that my children feel that with me. And, and indeed, one very wise piece of advice was given to me a while ago from my sister-in-law, actually, who's also got children. And she said to me, with regards to difficulties you have, you know, bringing up children from time to time, whatever age they are, whether they're five, 25, 35, you're always a mother. Um, but particularly when they're under your roof, okay, but not, not just that, actually, thinking about it. The, the piece of advice was this, which was that if you can create um, a, a, a loving semblance of home, which is about you actually it's about it isn't necessarily a building it, it doesn't have to be a particular place it doesn't have to be a dwelling it's where you are that you give that sense of security they will always be they've got a better chance of being okay there's no guarantees in life of course because everyone's got free will but there's somewhere to come back to it's like mother mary's energy which i've talked about before the safe harbor yeah. So we've got the energy of Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene coming in in different ways here and Carly Mar as well. I'm feeling it's this mothering energy, this empress energy, which is saying when everything feels as though it's falling apart, turn to me, turn to me and breathe and I will help you to feel home, what, what, whatever that looks like. And if it's changing and or it's gone, it, it's going to be something different. Um, it's also about feeling at home in the world, which is a difficult thing at the moment because many of us are not feeling at home in the world. I am wearing my Rebel Rebel t-shirt, but, you know, I feel a bit of a rebel at the moment. It's sort of like I don't like the way the world is, but I realise I have to, what is the expression? You have to be in the world, but not of the world. So, but, you know, this is home. This is the planet I chose to incarnate to, as did you at this time. We have to make the best of it that we can. Um, but definitely we've got these mother energies coming in. And yeah, look at this card on the bottom of the deck. We've got between two worlds is exactly what I was just saying. This is the transition times. And what else to say other than what I've said? Let me just pull another couple of cards that go with Between Worlds. The 
first thing I'm hearing is that when we are between worlds, <laughs> new life on the bottom of the deck, and there's a new life beckoning, it is going to feel different from day to day. It, it's literally going to be... It's going to be so different from day to day, between worlds. Every, everything changes um, so rapidly from day to day. So don't get stuck. I, I'm getting the analogy of the boxer again, Muhammad Ali. What's that thing about dance like a whatever, sting like a, dance like a butterfly, whatever the expression is. You know, um, we've got to be a bit more like that. Um, not get stuck in the trough of the problem that presents itself or the change that comes in. You can feel the feelings that arise with it, but realize that if you are, you're not going to stay stuck between worlds, basically. You don't. Think about birth itself. The baby has to come out of the body. There's no two ways about it. The baby has to be birthed. New life has to happen. Um, without, so there is that. Okay, there is that. Let me just pull one more card from this deck. Anything else to say, please, Spirit? Co-create. We have the energy of co-create. Yeah, you see, this is the thing I'm thinking, but back to the energy of support, that you need others. We all need others. No man is an island, all of that. So try not to ever let yourself get to a place where you have shut yourself off to such a degree or cut yourself off from a network that can support you that you are basically out on the street. Um, and again, I say no judgment if you don't have a support network. I realize many don't. So what do we do? Tomorrow is a new day. We start to build it. And it has to be built organically. You can't force it. It's not about, right, what can I join? What can I become a member of to find friends or people that are going to you know, help me? It's um, it's organic. It's like breath, what Metatron is saying. And, and it works like this in terms of, for example, you do a good deed for somebody and then that it, it, and, and then something will come back to you that you need. It's that type of thing. Um, funnily enough, again, I've been talking a lot about repeating patterns in my last video. Today's memory from Facebook that I haven't put up, but I just check them in the morning. I think it was on my personal page. It was a little story that I'd written, I don't know, eight years ago. And I was talking about the fact that um, I had met this tramp in the, sorry, I don't know, I don't like to call people tramps, but I don't know what else, a homeless person. It's Maybe it's a bit of a UK expression, so don't come at me for saying that. Um, I'd met this guy, I'm just going to see if I can find it, in the park. Or oh, maybe it was yesterday's memory. Anyway, and maybe I was having a low moment. I was feeling a bit down over whatever. I really can't remember now. But I'd had this amazing conversation with this guy. Um, and and I, I remember I walked away from him feeling so buoyant and, and happier. And, you know, he set my day back on the right path, as it were. Um, he gave something to me. Hopefully, I also give other things to other people. It's that type of thing, you know? Um God will God will provide is what they say, don't they? God will always provide. And we're back to trust and faith. Whatever it is that we feel as though we can't cope with, we will be able to cope with. I know another person, again, obviously not going to name names, but, you know, around me at the moment who has somebody who's very sick in their life. And to be honest, thought this person was on the way out. Uh, and it's a very, very difficult situation. It's got very abusive, very toxic. They're trying their best to help this person who they thought was about to die. They've just been given another three years of life. And it's like this person who's the carer literally can't cope. And it's just like, I, I don't know how I'm going to cope now because I thought we only had months and now we've got years. That type of thing. And I'm sure there's a people like there are people watching me that will resonate with that. How do I keep going? I, I don't know how to keep going. People who've lost people they love. Uh, many of you, of course, grief is something that unites all of us. Somehow we keep going. So keep the tentacles out. Be like the octopus, you know, <laughs> put your tentacles out to um, lovingly uh, ask for 
support and help, but also realise that it it mirrors back to you what you give out as well. So it's this beautiful balance of giving and receiving, um, which is to do with um, how we live our life day to day. Okay, how we live our life day to day. Now, I also wanted to pick up something else that was said in that comment about feeling I suppose what the what I was sensing from it and I, I get this I you know we can all feel like this from time to time it's like I'm doing my best spirit I'm doing my best I'm trying my best I'm trying to remember to be grateful I'm trying to whatever it is you know and then it feels like a slap in the face when things go wrong but are things really going wrong or are they just breaking down to make way for something better, which you cannot see at the time that it's happening? You cannot see it the time it's happening. But over time, when you look back, you think, actually, that's the best thing that could have happened to me. Whether it be, you know, that person leaving me, that business going bankrupt, um, whatever it is, you know, um, even illness can be like this from time to time. It's like if I hadn't become ill, or I hadn't had that wake up call, I would have never have stepped into what I'm doing now, or I would never have been able to truly see what this planet was actually all about, or found my faith or, you know, whatever. So it's, it's not there to hurt you, it's there to reform you, is what I'm hearing, to reform and reformulate you, to rebirth you, basically. And it feels like a shattering and a Humpty Dumpty moment, which is like all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty together again. It's a very old fashioned English uh, children's rhyme, if you don't know what I'm going on about. But the thing is, you, you can be put together again. And it's your team that does that. It's higher self. It's the angels. It's whoever you believe in. It's your friends. Um, but it's also qualities such as grit, determination, perseverance, stamina, um, sheer bloody mindedness as well sometimes. Yeah. So I think at this point, what would be interesting is I'm going to pull... I've got four decks here, okay, four different decks of cards with four um, different sprays on them. And I mean, you can take, you can take the message, I'm going to do each of them. So, but there might just be one that pulls you more than the other. So before we, before I do it, maybe just, how are we going to do this? I'm going to maybe think of a colour. So the, the first pile is belonging to purple and gold, which is higher self. We'll call this pile one. The second pile is white sage. We'll call this pile two. The third pile is magenta bridge. We'll call this pile three. And the fourth pile is new light. And we'll call that pile four. So number one, number two, number three, number four. And I don't know whether lots of you want number three, but I'm going to start with number three. Also, it sort of matches the colour on my wall today. So... This is pile number three that I'm starting with, and it is the Sacred Rebel deck by Alana Fairchild with the Magenta Bridge spray. So anybody that was humming or going for three, we're going to do this one. Let's see what the message is from this. Uh, I'm firstly going to use the spray. So Magenta Bridge is linked into time and self-mastery. So you might be experiencing issues with time, feeling as though you're running out of time, feeling as though you don't have enough time. Um, or it might be a case you feel as though you've got all the time in the world and you're bored. Um, I don't know. But it's also the energy of self-mastery. Now, magenta is a colour also, which is about the bridge to the new. So it feels as though this pile people that are resonating with this colour, there's definitely, you're being asked to take a step up the ladder. 
Uh, now, it, uh, what I'm being shown here is that the step that you've been standing on is rotten and is actually uh, breaking. And so for some of you, you've got no choice. You've got no damn choice. You have to go up to the next step, the next level, the next frequency this can be as well. Um, it feels as though you've been standing on the more lower step for too long and it's time to go up a gear it all it's the analogy of sort of remember when you were at school and we can get very uh happy maybe or, or just i don't know that you get used to being in junior school or infant school and then the day comes you have to go to senior school and it's a whole different ball game and it's like i don't really know if i want to do that but it's like well you're the age you are now you're gonna have to you know that's the sort of energy i'm getting here so Remember that you're only being called to go higher or to go to the next step because spirit feels as though you're ready and your higher self is champing at the bit, champing at the bit. OK, so let's do this. Magenta Bridge. Hmm, that's nice. Um so for royalty in this country, what they do is they roll out the red carpet. And what I'm being shown by Metatron is the magenta carpet being rolled out, rolled out. So there's also an energy here of congratulations for surviving whatever you've survived, but equally for um, whatever the last chapter was uh, that is closing out. It feels as though... It's just an acknowledgement from spirit in terms of well done, you know, well done. It's like a graduation type energy, really. I'm now being shown, you know, the um, the mortar boards that you have when you're a graduate. They're usually black, aren't they? But I'm being shown it's like magenta. So, uh, but, but there's definitely a feeling of like, oh, I don't know whether I can. Okay, let's pull a card then from Sacred Rebels for pile number three. We've got the card which says, free from judgment, free to love. Free from judgment, free to love. And on the bottom of the deck, we've also got trust yourself. So there's definitely a feeling coming through here of liberation and freedom. Being able to experience and move into territory that you might not have experienced before. Um, but it feels very well deserved and well earned. And what I rather love here is that it feels as though this group has a love for animals because can you see the lady here? She's surrounded by forest and forest animals in particular. We've got the birds. We've got little monkeys. There's, I think, um, a lion or a tigress there. We've got cats. We've got lizards. We've got butterflies. We've got chameleons. Uh, we've got beetles. We've got the whole kingdom of heaven is what I'm hearing. So there's definitely a an energy here which is linked into the animal kingdom and maybe you get a lot of comfort from 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 nature i want to say from nature but there's also this thing this graduation this well done it's like letting go of the judgment of what other people think what other people think if you make a choice that they might not agree with or how other people are going to view this new change that's coming in for you. Um, let them, because this person seems pretty unbothered by it, okay? Pretty unbothered by it. We'll pull one more card. We'll pull three cards for each uh, pile, as it were. And we've got the energy of Sacred Fool, yeah. Um, card number 40, Sacred Fool. That card, every time I use this deck, I always pull it and I always get confused by it and I always have to go to the book. So I don't know why I find it such a hard card to get my head around. But anyway, let's see what it says. Uh, Sacred Fool. I'll put it back up to the camera in a moment. <laughs> rebel, rebel. The fool is a great rebel, right? <laughs> The fool is a great rebel, able to thwart convention and tell the truth without constraint. 
Your heart is a wonderful, powerful, sacred fool. It cares not for the right way to do things. It cares not for what the mind says is real and not real. It lives according to an inner wisdom that cannot be dictated to or controlled by anything. It loves, it lives, and it is what it is. This oracle heralds a time, now or imminent, when you will feel inspired, alive and passionate for what you can offer to the world. It says to you, don't try to be appropriate, don't try to be socially acceptable and worry about what others may think about what you are doing, just be. If you want to wear a mad hat whilst doing so, fine. Okay, goes on. It's quite a long message, but um, I think that was the gist that I was really picking up. And yeah, it's also making the point that people might be very, very challenged by this new you, um, this new liberated you. Bec and I'll tell you what that's about. They're challenged because they can't get to the same place, um, but they haven't walked your path. They're not you. Let them be whatever they want to be and make any judgments they want to judge. But you're not scathed by it. Really beautiful. Okay, so that's pile number three. Let's now go to, we'll do go back into numer numerological order now. Let's go back and be sensible. Or maybe not. Um, pile number one. So pile number one, those of you that chose the purple and gold, this is the Archangel Metatron Higher Self Spray. Okay, so interesting I said let's go back and be sensible because the higher self is this um, beautiful deep pool of grounded strength is what I'm hearing, grounded strength. Um, it doesn't get easily rocked by drama. It doesn't get easily rocked by what's happening in the collective, however bad things are or however wild things are. Um, it just stays on track, you know, and it knows what it's here to do in any lifetime and it completes it to the best of its ability. So it can be a bit despairing sometimes of the lower self that we all have in terms of oh god she's not doing that again or he's not going there is he come on that type of energy but ultimately your higher self loves you because it is you so there's also a message here about how much how 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 do how much do you love yourself at the moment now the higher self spray goes with this deck which is the gaia oracle by tony carmine salerno so we'll um shuffle this in a moment but i just want to use the spray so higher self connection and alignment it talks about connection and alignment to your higher self i'm definitely getting the word rebel again with this group as well but maybe in a slightly different way it's as though there is a rebellious uh, truculent inner child energy stamping a feet no i will not do that this is also linked into mission and soul purpose a reluctance to go there and do that um, but your higher self is pushing you so again this uh, alignment coming up with full moon in aquarius it's not just going to happen on that day but it births something it brings something in which is like come on it, it really is now time to get going with what you're here to be doing and if you don't know what it is you're meant to be doing we're going to start giving you signs and you better start you know looking for them and taking notice of them and, and acknowledging them uh, so this higher self energy that I'm channeling today means business it just feels as though it means business it's it, it, it wants to be noticed by you so if you haven't been taking notice of it and you've been more noticing your lower self you know more the monkey on the shoulder which is telling you of course you can go and do something destructive or daft you know of course it doesn't matter it, it matters it's almost like the grown-up up energy coming in here so let's see what we get i don't know let's see what we get what card comes up for group number one yeah i'm definitely getting a reluctance energy with you uh if you've chosen this one there's there's definitely a reluctance in terms of not liking to be told what to do either so it's like the grown-up in the room arrives and it's like i don't want to listen i don't want to do that um 
but maybe just needing to open your ears and your mind to the fact that the person that you think or the situation that you think is trying to control you is actually trying to teach you something okay is actually trying to yeah it's trying to teach you something it's not it's not an enemy it's uh it might even be for this group that a bit more control and a bit more structure is needed. And and there's a sort of a, a running away from that a little bit. Okay, let's see what card we get. Not wanting to come out. Okay, we have got it. We've got purification and water. So I have to cover up. This is the ridiculous censorship of our age. We're not allowed to see what a woman looks like anymore. Um, but I'm being serious. You can get you, you can get flagged for this now. So that's a lady, and she's standing in water, and it says purification, water, emotional cleansing, and rejuvenation. So that stuck energy that I was feeling, this reluctant, truculent type energy, it can be released in water. So feels very much almost like baptism type energy as well. I'm not talking about Christian baptism. I'm talking just about baptism generally, the, the baptism that water gives us. Um, you know, you go to the sea, you go for a swim, you come out, you feel better. Um, getting in water, underneath water, um, returning to water. We've got Gaia on the bottom of the deck as well which says wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding. And then we've got purification fire. Ooh. Okay, I'll pull a four. Oh, no, I said three cards, didn't I? So let's stick with those three. Right, you've got all the elements. All the elements are coming through for group number one. So your higher self is saying, can you please get in touch with the elements a bit more? Um, earth, water, and fire. So you've got two purification cards purification through water and purification through fire um hopefully it's not you know that's not linked into weather and geography and you know you might be in a part of the world maybe that's got wildfires happening or flooding happening i hope not but um i have to say that as well if if that is the case uh, invoke merkaba around your uh, your property. Look on my Earth Changes video that I made. There's one about that. I'll link it below. Um, I need to do an update on all of this soon anyway with regards to helping us with changing weather. Let's just put it that way. But it could be that or it could just be that no, you know, the, the qualities of fire and water are needed by you. Um, fire in terms of lighting the inner fire again getting you going um your mojo back momentum motivation all of that and gaia feels as though it's saying it's, it's like time to get stuck into something time to really ground and root something i definitely feel as though this group is a bit rebellious in terms of um not liking to be told what to do or where to go and that's all well and good I'm a bit like that as well to be perfectly honest but there are there's a time and a place just to get stuck in and do it you know and you've actually got something to finish off do it you've got a timeline do it you know and that might bring up all sorts of memories of parental control which is like no I'm not going to do it because you know you but it's like who who's the loser here the loser is you when the deadline isn't met the project isn't finished or whatever however else it's manifesting in your life okay so definitely an energy of purification coming up for group number one and your higher self wanting you definitely to connect to nature this full moon i know i said only three cards but we have also got the moon card on the bottom of the deck um it's asking you to reflect definitely asking you to be in nature around this full moon in aquarius so that's group number one let's group let's do group number two now and let me just have some water from my new do you like my new mug well it's not really a mug i don't know what you call this it's a bit daft actually john bought them for the girls we got them in crete but um I think I just need to take the bit of plastic off it. It's got one of those drink holes in it. Love yourself, it says. Do you, group number two? Is that a message to come through for group number two? I don't know. You see, 
I wonder whether group number one and group number two might be quite similar. I might be wrong. I don't know. I haven't tuned in yet. But we've got the white sage spray, which is the purification. This is, um, I can't see without my glasses. This is our smudging spray, smudging and clearance, white sage. You know when you, you, you smudge sage? Well, this is sage in a bottle, basically. So, and it is with this deck, which is uh, Earth Magic by Stephen D. Farmer. So, uh, I feel as I want to do the card first. This group feels as though they like to be a little bit different. It's like, no, I don't want to follow that formula. You know, pull the card first, please. And then we'll get to the spray. So, yeah, there's definitely also an energy here of like, I want to do it my way. My way or the highway, though, maybe. Is there a bit of ego coming in? I don't know. Let's see. So, group number... Uh, where were we? <laughs> I don't know what group this was. Second group, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what card for group number two. Dreamtime creation with clouds shape shifting and iceberg submerged. So there's an energy coming through that you're a bit of a, uh, a daydreamer, daydream believer by the monkeys. I'm getting that. Uh, great song. Love the monkeys. But, um, so there's a great well of creativity within you, submerged, waiting to be birthed. Why are you not doing it? Why are you not doing it, group two? Why are you... Okay, it might be a lack of worthiness, um, feeling as though what you offer isn't very good. Do you know, I was at a coffee shop the other day, yesterday in fact, um, and... There was some artwork on the walls and also some painted shells and you know it was all very artsy and nice and there was a beautiful shell that it was all painted and I picked it up and I thought I mean I don't need anything like that but I thought Do you know I might get that it's really lovely I thought it would probably be about 14 pounds maybe 15 pounds four quid and I and then I looked at the picture and I thought that's got to be about 40 it was 10 quid and I what I, what came to me was that artist does not see that their work is worth the money that somebody would pay for it because okay we all like a bargain but actually if you are an artist or you've got something to offer including in business um, you should be able to command a good price and that's not to do with being money grabbing. That's to do with you valuing that actually it took me three days to draw that painting. It's taken me, you know, a month to create that. It's taken me a year to write that book. You know, it's taken me, I don't know, two weeks to make that piece of jewellery. Um, I, I bought some earrings. I'm not wearing them uh, last week. I'll have to show you in another video. They're actually of Frida Kahlo. Uh, they're in silver and they've got little beads where her garlands in her hair would be. And I saw them and I fell in love with them and they, they weren't cheap. But the, why I actually bought them was, yes, I loved them, but also it was a art artisan. It, it was in a, she was standing underneath this sort of you know, umbrella on a rainy day at a coffee shop. And it didn't look like she'd made hardly any sales. And I could see the effort she'd put into making her stuff. And it was all beautiful. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to have those because I can afford them. But equally, I want to, I, I'm not meaning this to sound conceitious. It's like, I want to make your day because I know it's going to, I remember the days when I used to try and sell my sprays or other people's sprays and I'd stand in a, a holistic fair. Nobody would even come and say hello to me. Nobody wanted anything I did. Uh, all of that, you know, it was like I was invisible. And then one person comes in and they see you and they value what you do and it lifts your whole day. Anyway, how do we get onto all of this? Um, well, it was to, it's to do with, yeah, valuing what you do, okay? Because actually when you feel invisible, and like no one's even noticing, that can also be to do with the fact that you don't value yourself, you know? In the early days, n not so much with my range that I sell, my sprays, but I used to um, 
I used to be involved with another company and their products and I would often give them away. And then, of course, no one even values them because it's like you've given something away that you should have charged the right price for. Why That, that wasn't just about generosity. That was about the fact that it was almost like desperation or I don't know, um, or, or worse, feeling terribly sorry for the other person. And then you're assuming that they can't actually afford to give you something or at least make a donation all of that this is all to do with self-worth i think so we've got dream time creation and clouds shape-shifting so allow yourself to be inspired this um full moon in aquarius and allow what is submerged to start to arise you know um what can you create right let's now do the white sage and i realize now why i had to do it second which is having said that shall we now let go of that whole energy of i can't or i couldn't <laughs> or well should we try to melt the melt the iceberg let's use the um white sage okay I just want to just sort of want to smile it's sort of like well of course um yeah get the paintbrush out start writing start doing whatever it is you've been putting off doing um watch your dreams as well dream times are important lots of inspiration coming through for you in dream time lots of messages from spirit coming through shapes in the clouds feathers on the floor all of that there was a silly little um i don't know one, you know one of those little social media quizzes that you get where people are like if you see an elephant it means this if you see a dog it means this and i looked at it today and i thought well, i can't see an elephant i can't or i can't see a dog i can see a, i can see something like a, something totally different that type of thing is good you know think outside the box don't just accept two options make a third make a third okay final grouping is for the people that chose new light i think this was group number four i've rather lost track but yeah group number four new light uh, i don't think we actually sell this spray anymore but uh so apologies if it's not in the shop this was one that we created at the start of a new of the start of this year no it wasn't it was one we brought out last christmas so this pack this spray goes with the metatron self-mastery deck and it feels as though it's taking us back to last christmas so something might be arising in your life right now that was seeded around christmas time or you had an idea or you started something or something went wrong or something fell away i don't know it seemed to be just linking back to christmas for whatever reason or that period in december um, and the purpose of this spray was to bring new light in, new inspiration. And it feels as though this group might have gone a little bit off track. I, I use the expression, I've gone a bit off track, I can't remember what group this is. Feels as though there's something to what I just said there, okay? So it, it might have had, you know, the impetus to start something new, but you've lost your way a little bit feels as though you've lost your way a little bit um so you need another surge of new positive energy to get you back on track keep you going etc okay uh let's pull a card to go with this i'm going to take that one on the bottom of the deck actually before i've even um pulled and I'll, then i'll get another two we've got the flower of life um and we've got letting go okay and then i'll pull a third let me just do those two first though so flower of life and letting go to create something you're always going to have periods in your life where it doesn't go according to plan you start off with a master plan and then you fall away and then you've got to get back on track you've got to let go of something um an old and I'll, how to explain this i mean to be honest i resonate with this a bit because i felt this this morning so 
I instigated this new plan, fitness plan at the start of the year. I've been doing very well, but I must admit the last few weeks have been a bit more difficult because I've been on holiday. There's been lots of lovely parties to go to, all the rest of it. Um, and I thought, why have I gone off track? You know, I'm not badly off track. I was at the gym this morning, but you know, it's just like, I know I need to get back to how good I was being a few weeks ago. And I thought, I know what it is. It's because the goal that I'd set myself, which is, you know, get fitter for summer, we're now in summer, you know, I'm in the clothes, I can get into them. It's like, oh, well, you know, I need another goal. That's what I'm trying to say. So to keep on track with the original plan that was made, which is still valid, <coughs> that type of thing. My husband is, um, he's very, very sporty and uh, uh, very fit as well. And he's always said to me, he, he naturally seems to be able to just get, him, get himself out on a really dark winter's evening to go circuit training or uh, whatever it is. He's always done it. And I must admit, my motivation is not so good. If you, if you, if you live in my type of country, you know, the dark winter's evenings, as soon as you get cosy in front of the fire, there's no way in hell you're going to get me to the gym. But John's able to do it. But the, he, what he's always said to me is that you always have to have a goal in mind and it doesn't matter if the goal changes you have to have a goal you have to have something to work towards so when you've achieved a goal um then what you can start to you can start to go backwards again there's a lady i follow on youtube actually i can't remember what she's called but she's in her 50s she's very inspirational and she you know she tur turned her life around and she does lots of diet advice and lifestyle advice and you know and she'd just written a new she's written a book about all her experiences of from going from that to this you know and and then it was published and then she disappeared for a few weeks i was like i wonder where she's gone and then she came back recently. She said, I'm just feeling so demotivated. <laughs> I'm finding it so hard to get back on track. And I, it's, it's what I'm talking about. And of course she will, but you've just got to find that enthusiasm again that you had at the start, but you have to have a new goal. Yeah. Let me pull one more card for you. Group number four. Even the cards, card number three, card number four, logical steps, you know, take it a step at a time. Um, take it day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour um, as well. Right, let's see, any other message? I feel there's another message that wants to come through for this pile. Why did you say that, Amanda? As soon as you say that, of course, Metatron will give you another great big subject to talk about. I'm not sure, this is, you know, this could be a whole video in itself. Well, it's karma, basically. There's karma, untying the knots from karma, but it came in upside down. There's something you're not looking at that involves a karmic situation. And the fourth card is action and movement needed. There's something, there's some karmic situation around you, karmic contract around you where movement is needed. Um, what the hell does that mean? I don't know what it means because it can be so varied. Uh, let me pull a fifth, this card, this, this pile's going to get a fifth card. Okay, let's just do that. What goes with upside down karma, conquering fear? There's something you're not wanting to face. Uh, that links into karma, it, a karmic contract, I'm wanting to say. It might be a fear of letting go of a karmic contract. As weird as that sounds, um, you'd think that when it's complete, it'd be like, yippee, off to the next thing. Uh, no, because all change is scary some of the time and closing out chapters is difficult. But it's as though we're going back in a perfect circle. So if 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 something is wanting to close out in your life at the moment, you're back to the beginning. You're back to creation again. You're back to maybe reforming your life and redefining your life. And who, I, who am I and what am I if I'm not that or I'm not there or I'm not doing this or I'm not with that person? What can I, what, what is my next chapter going to be like? New light. New light wants to come in. 
to to help you so let the light in basically let the light in and let go of fear yes let go of fear but let go of some sort of karmic situation that is wants to wants to wants to complete and for some reason you're not allowing it to um and i'm wondering whether it's because there's an energy of it needing to play out in the way that you thought it should needing to be right i'm hearing needing to be right or it needing to be done in a certain manner and the sword just comes in and it's like no it's over time to sever it um time to move on and we've got the moon again for that okay so i hope that helped um so that's the four piles let's now to finish off this video let's go back to all of us together although i suspect most of you probably listen to all four because they might all have been relevant maybe or in part um let's do some charms I haven't done that for a while let's pull some charms so for people that don't like noise um i am going to make a noise <coughs> come on feel the noise mm -hmm, girls and boys was that slade brilliant come on feel the noise mm -hmm. i'm gonna make some noise okay so if you're really sensitive ears then just dim your volume a little bit for 30 seconds i'm gonna rummage in my trinket box who are misses right <laughs> what's he called frankie um who was that frankie Oh, Frankie Howard. I'm getting, hang I'm getting Frankie Howard vo vibes coming on. I'm sure lots of you don't know who Frankie Howard is, but um, was. Anyway, brilliant guy. By the way, I'm pretty sure I'm committed to doing a channeling with Matthew Perry. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say that. So his energy's here. Anyway, let's do this for you. Let's, let me just reconcentrate. I just keep going slayed. Come on, feel the noise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Come on, Amanda, concentrate. For the people watching, let's have some final messages, please. See what we've got, guys. I'm going to put it in my very sophisticated little system here. Oops, that one fell down. A heart landed in my lap. A heart landed in my lap. Wow. You have you hold somebody's heart maybe in your lap in your hands oh look at that i got my little girl guide badge <laughs> my girl guide badge from when i was a kelpie sixer i was so proud of being a kelpie sixer i've said this to you before so i was a girl guide when it was good to be a girl guide i'm sure it still is i shouldn't say that i just don't like all the woke wokeism in our country and in the world but anyway scrub that pretend i didn't say that uh you see, I've always been a bit of a rebel. <laughs> girl guide. The girl guide promise. It's probably something different now. But in my day, it was do a good, basically it was do a good deed every day. And um, should we see what it is now? I almost dread to think what it is now. Let's just see what the girl guide promise is now. I bet it's not what it was. You probably can't say God now or something. Because uh, I think it had a reference to God. Girl guide promise i promise to do my best to do my duty to god to that was something like that and you had to do that with your fingers i promise that i will do my best to be true to myself and develop my beliefs to serve the king and my community to help other people and to keep the guide law they've taken god out of it don't get angry amanda get even they've taken god out of the brownie promise really is that where we're at? I'm sure it used to have God in it. God in it. Promise to do my duty. I'm sure it used to do. Anyway. You see, when you take God out of things, the air goes out of the balloon. Um, we need to bring, when I say God, you know, I'm talking spirit. I'm talking angels. I'm talking ascended masters don't get triggered by the word god it's universe creator see my nose is going now i'm onto something god doesn't like to be put in the corner you know and ignored right what else have we got that's why the that's why the heart fell 
the heart fell, heart consciousness has fallen. We need to get it back. We need to embody that. We've got a little bit of um, clear quartz to help us. We've got a bit of, um, I think that's meant to be a little uh, clover leaf. I know you can't see it on my camera. It's a little clover leaf. We've got sheaves of corn. That reminds me of Joseph and the prophecy of the sheaves of corn um, and, the, and the years of famine and plenty. Preparation. You see, that, that's again, going back to what I was talking about at the beginning in terms of a support network. If we are to have difficult times in our world in the future, which probably we are going to, you know, we need to be preparing for them, you know, um, preparing for years of hopefully not famine, but, you know, just difficulty. Let's just put it that way. So preparing without being scared. You see, we've also got the little acorns there, which remind me, I know you can't see them, but it's like, reminds me of a little squirrel that stores its nuts, you know, because it knows that it's going to be a long winter. Um, the squirrel would be dead if it didn't, you know, forage and have something in reserve. We have to have things in reserve. We've also got the hair, excuse me, we've got the hair, the rabbit, um, which for me is linking into springtime. So I'm being taken to springtime. And we've got a tree. A tree. I feel as though I just want two more charms. We've got the moon. And I've got a steering wheel. Well, it's not a steering wheel. It's, you know, the thing on the ship that guides the ship. So it feels as there's a message here for um, sort of squaring off the video, really, going back to what we were talking about at the, the start. For times when we don't have plenty, times when we feel we have nothing, um, ideally we don't want to get to that place. We, we should be preparing in advance so that we don't fall flat on our face. But if we do fall flat on our face and we have nothing, uh, let me pull a charm for that. I don't know what that was meant to be. I think it's meant to be a fox. I've got the ank. Yeah, that's probably more relevant, the ank. Hold on to um, hope. Hold on to God, I want to say. Hold on to God. Hold on to the universe. Let God take the wheel as well, it feels. Let God take the wheel. And there's also something here with the tree, linking into the tree of life, which is that, and I've said this before, the, tr the tree, your life, might be being shook right now. Um, but the roots are not going to be completely uprooted. There will always be rooting whilst you're still alive on this earth. There can't not be. And you only need a very small root to bring the whole tree back to life. Okay. So it's very much where we're at at the moment. Let's pull a final card then. Um, from hmm, which deck should we go to? Let's go to the one we were using at the... No, we, this one. I did pull this and I haven't used it. This is the Energy Oracle Cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. So, and we're going to be focusing particularly around the Aquarius... Aquarius? The Aquarius Full Moon. Oops. Aquarius Full Moon. Final message, please. For the people watching. Aquarius Full Moon. Daughter Romance for some. Nice. Not for everybody, probably, realistically, but we've got Daughter Romance. Let's see what else. I do feel as though it's a powerful portal for, for Twin Flames, I have to say. Uh, definitely feeling an upsurge with the Twin Flame energy, but I've done a recent Twin Flame video. Um, let's see what else. What goes with Daughter Romance? Mm. yeah it's um somebody's let go of attachment and there's been a period of rest and rejuvenation 
we've got yin yang caring connections and this only comes about because this is the door to value this is about the door to romance is open because somebody has remembered what they're worth it doesn't mean it's all going to happen next Tuesday. Of course it doesn't. It means that the pathway is being set for, for this, <clears throat> for connections. We're back to where we started as well, whether it's we're talking love or in a more general sense. Life is about the connections that we make with each other. Are they caring? Are they loving? Do we um, walk on by when somebody needs help? Or do we do we offer them a leg up? Do we offer the, do we offer them um, assistance without uh, getting to a place where we're disempowering them? Yeah. So giving assistance where it's needed for the time period where it's needed to get people back up on their feet feels as though there's a lot of people who um, are going to just need a bit of assistance to get back up on their feet, and you might very well be one of them. Um, so. If you are, I send you my love. But yeah, that's the message for today. Hope you found it beneficial. If you did, please do give me a little like um, because it helps me get past the dreaded algorithm. Um, and to people that have never maybe heard of me before who I might be able to help and who might be literally in a state of collapse and despair and just needing some spiritual sustenance and a bit of a guiding light. So I would appreciate if you could give me a little like. Thank you very much. Take great care. Have a good uh, full moon in Aquarius and I will be back soon, maybe with Matthew Perry. Okay, bye-bye for now. Bye.